If you haven't noticed, college athletics are changing. Players can transfer from their schools without sitting out a year. Companies, car dealers, and fast food chains are handing out six and seven figure deals for the best athletes in the nation. The impact is felt not just on a national level, but right here in Central Texas. They think that if their kids don't go Division One, that they're a failure. I think it's going to ruin college football. In 2021, the NCAA passed two rules that altered its landscape. The first was allowing revenues for athletes a one-time transfer exception, where they don't have to sit out a year. The second was the passing of a name, image, and likeness policy, allowing student athletes to profit while playing a sport. I think it's a toxic mixture, and I think I think what it does is it's counterintuitive and counterproductive to the core values that God calls us to have and that we're, we're as young men we need and young people we need. Despite strong opinions on it, CBS sports writer Dennis Dodd says this combo is here to stay. I do not think we're going backwards. I mean, the reason the portal is there, the reason the one-time transfer exception is in place is because of the legal liability of of not doing it. This result has been labeled as the wild, wild west. Sports Illustrated reports that the number of football players entering the portal has shattered last year's number, and we're only eight months into the period. They report that at least 20 players per team on average at the D1 level are entering. Baylor felt that pressure, where naming a starting quarterback this spring meant losing another. Offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes acknowledged the new duties the portal creates for coaches. Um, I think you have to be aware of it, certainly. I think if you, if you just pretend like it doesn't exist, then, then you're going you're gonna to wind up um, feeling like you're, you're, um, you're behind the eight ball a little bit. It's a world that McLennan basketball coach Kevin Gill sees issues with. You can actually uh, you know, get beat by a team, go transfer to that team, and then go back and play your school and win or lose. I mean, it's just no loyalty. The positive side of this is the freedoms Division I athletes now enjoy, but it could negatively affect athletes at other levels. But I see it from the uh, aspect of uh, good high school players that are waiting around for a Division I scholarship, and a guy transfers that's 21 years old uh, that has uh, stats, numbers, and experience behind him. I mean, I can't blame the uh, college coach for taking a 21 year old experienced player. Dodd spoke with someone who oversees the national letter of intent program for the NCAA, who says it's too early to tell, but examples already exist where high school athletes are given the cold shoulder. It looks like, you know, this year, uh, obviously through the, the February signing day, there were less high school players. But I'd hardly call that a trend. I think that's something to think about. Temple football's Scott Stewart has seen it firsthand. I have seen exponentially less coaches because they're, they're shopping that portal. That word is now synonymous with college sports, leading to an uncharted path that will change the teams we root for and who plays for them. While the number in the transfer portal continues to rise, so does the price tag for NIL deals. Multiple sources have reported that a class of 2023 five-star recruit has an $8 million deal in place. It's believed to be the largest at this time. It's just getting crazy.